What's up, you guys? We are out here in Hawaii. I'm here with our special guest, Jeremy. What's up? We're going to be interviewing him today on this podcast episode. We want to be sharing a story, how he got started in real estate as an agent in 2014. Yeah. And segued into an investor two years ago. Now he's killing it, man. Look where we're at. Beautiful view. Thank you for having us too, man. Dude, yeah, definitely. And today we just want to spread massive value and share and give you guys advice. If you're wanting to become an investor, comment down below, investor, and you know we'll get to you guys and spread the love. So Jeremy, dude, share us your story, man. How did you get started in real estate? Bro? Yeah, real estate. So yeah, I got licensed in 2014, still in college. And um, my mom is a real estate agent and she kind of inspired me to do it. So if we backtrack, I went into college in 2012, the fall. I went to UC Irvine in California and I was a bio major. I, bio wanted, major. To be, I wanted to be a dentist. Okay. And um, I, I have no idea why I chose that. It was I think it was mostly just because like, you know, my Filipino parents wanted me to do something in the medical field. So I was like, all right, I'll be a dentist. And not a know, nurse, though. Not a nurse. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Cheers. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'll be a dentist. Cool. F found out I hated biology. I hated chemistry. I was like, this is not for me. I ended up transferring to University of Hawaii. Uh, my parents divorced, so I felt like, okay, it would be better if I just come home when everything's cheaper. Okay. So I'm there, and I'm thinking like, oh, man, I hate. I'm not going to do it. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be a dentist. What can I do? So my mom, she was a realtor. She was suggesting that I become a real estate agent. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's let's try this out. This is cool. Like, you know, realtors make a lot of money. Mm. Let's do that. So I got my license. I'm 19 years old. Cool. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go be an agent during the summer and I'm going to make $100,000 and retire. Oh, no, not retire. I'll drop out of nice college, already. right? Okay. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. I'm ready. And um, none of those happened. Okay. I realized like, whoa, like being a real estate agent is a lot harder than I thought. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll just stay in college. Finish my degree in 2017. And that's when I went uh, full-time into being a real estate agent. Okay. Yeah. And so starting out as an agent did you experience a lot of hardships that kind of pushed you forward into the investing side i'm assuming because i started out as an oh, agent yeah. too oh nice, you know, nice i did nice. 10 years in the military got out went to become a real estate agent Boom. last year and then i quickly realized like dude yep i don't like chasing buyers <laughs> now or you know sellers and everyone yeah. ghosting me and i was like you know what the investing side is more where it's at yeah you want to grow that long-term long wealth that yeah. generational wealth yes so for me i was like you know what Let's go into the investing side. You know, we, like we were talking about earlier, yeah. all the big entrepreneurs out there, Gary V, Grant Cardone, yeah. they are all on real estate, but they're not agents, you yes, know? Yes. So I'm kind of glad we started out as the agent side. But what is one thing that you learned from being a real estate agent first mm -hmm. that has helped you as an investor now? Um, I think it was like my transition. So like, like you were saying in the beginning, like was there any, I guess, trials, tribulations, mm -hmm. you know, the hard struggle? Oh yeah, I had a lot of struggle. Um, I mean, starting as a 19-year-old, you know, a lot of people are just looking at me like, dude, you're a kid, you know, like you can't, you don't know anything about real estate. Mm -hmm. And it kind of pissed me off. It put a chip on my shoulder, but they were right. You know, I didn't know anything about real estate. Um, so 2017, I think I'm 23. Uh, okay. I sell nothing. 20. Um, so it was your first, what? First, like half year. Half year, okay. 2018 is my first full year. Okay. I sell three homes and I made like $20,000. And I was like, oh my God, like I suck. So I was like, you know, I really like, I'm really competitive. And especially competitive with myself, I'm like, dude, okay. like, you're way better than that. You can do so much better. And like, I set the bar high. I was like, Jeremy, like, failure is not an option. Like, you need to reinvent yourself and work ten times harder, a hundred times harder, whatever it takes to get what you want. And okay. like, at that time, it was like, make six figures. So 2019, I like flipped the switch and I just went super hard. And um, I discovered like, okay, what works for me was social media, social media, okay. Instagram specifically, and um, helping. Uh, First time home buyers, millennials, people our age that are, you know, new to real estate and they would rather work with me than like a boomer agent. Yeah. That, you know, so they felt comfortable with me and I started to realize that. 2019, that's when I hit six figures for the first time. I'm uh, Cheers, brother. Cheers. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate all the wins, right? Yes. Um so at that time I'm twenty five. I'm like, all right, cool. This is dope. Um, so I'm like, I don't want to stay at six figures. Like let's increase it, you mm -hmm. know? So that's 2019, 2020 comes around. It's March, 2020. I buy this condo that we're in. I'm like, awesome, Beautiful cool. Condo. It is right. And I'm like, all right, cool. My mortgage plus maintenance fee is around 3,800. Okay. And I was like, okay, like I can do that. You know, like maybe a little out of my budget or to, in, in terms of comfort, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Like, let's do it. Like it's going to push me to work harder because this is like the dream condo that I've yeah. always wanted to live. And then I close on this the next weekend COVID happens. Oh shit. All of Hawaii shuts down. Okay. 
I don't sell a house for the next two weeks. Okay. And I'm just like, oh my God, what did I do? Mm-hmm. Um, fast forward, they ended up lowering interest rates. All hell breaks loose. I sell 24 homes that year. Oh, wow. Almost like $300,000 in income. I was like, this is cool. But it's I got COVID too. I got, yeah. Okay. I got burnt out. And that was the time I started like realizing, man, like, do I want to be an agent the rest of my life? Mm-hmm. Like, yes, I'm good at it, but it's a constant grind. Wow. Yep. And, you know, I always hear about these entrepreneurs, these wealthy people, like it's all about passive income mm-hmm. and building wealth, like you said. At that time in 2020, that's when I started YouTube too. Okay. So as a YouTube creator, I started going down the rabbit holes, looking at other YouTube. That's when I learned about flipping. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, like this seems cool. Like let's try to do this. And then 2021, I was like, I'm going to start flipping houses. Okay. And uh, that was kind of like the transition where I was like, all right. Let's start flipping houses. You know? Got it. Yeah. From agent to investor. Yes. yes. Wow. From YouTube Academy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. It's amazing we can YouTube learn on YouTube, Academy. bro. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. I mean, we were just talking about that. Learn video production just from YouTube. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So flipping. Yes. What do you love about flipping? What is Ooh. the biggest difference between flipping and being a real estate agent? So real estate agent. While I was doing it, you know, I had this uh, idea like, oh, you're your own boss. You don't work for anyone. Mm-hmm. But really, if you think about it, all of your clients are your bosses. That's true. You know, I've had clients who like chewed me out. I've had clients that were annoying and I had to just, you know, kiss their ass. And I was like, yeah, you know, just put a smile on. So it's kind of like what you do with your boss. And, you know, 98% of my clients were awesome. They're like kind of like our age, cool. Like they understand how I I work. We have the same problems. You know, I'll like go to showings on a Saturday morning and we're both hungover. (laughs) (laughs) And it's cool. But I had like the small, like two to 5% of clients that were just soul suckers and like, I was just like, energy. I'm like, I don't like, I wish I could like not do this because I don't like you and I don't want you as a client. So yeah. I started getting burnt out with that. Then I realized as an investor, I'm literally my own boss. Mm-hmm. Like I worry about finding the properties, but I don't feel like finding properties that day. I don't, you know, no one's on my ass to find properties. Yeah. Check in. Exactly. Yeah. But once I do, like, I feel like I'm a very, you know, I take the initiative. Like I want to. So like, it's cool not having someone on your ass about it. Mm-hmm. I'll be on my own ass. That's fine. And once I get the deal going, we're doing rehab. It's fun. Like I don't do anything. Literally all I do um, as a flipper, like since I do content, I just go to the flip once a week and make TikTok videos, you know, okay. YouTube videos. Wow. So that's like super fun, you know. Just and to say top of mind. Yeah, right? okay. exactly. Just to put Updates. out content. Okay. And that was a big difference I saw from being – you know, an agent versus a flipper in, in terms of work, Yeah. Uh, in terms of income. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Like my first flip, it was five months. Okay. I made $72,000. Wow. That's like, net too. Yeah. Net. Holy shit. Wow. I was like, wow. Um, I split that three ways with partners, okay. but still like, wow, that was so fun. I had like a joy ride throughout the whole experience. My second flip was just by myself. I made $120,000. Wow. In, and the flip was like a super easy flip. I got a good deal. Uh, from buying to selling was 56 days. Okay. And I was like, wow, I made $120,000 in 56 days. days. You break it down. Like and I just made that? TikTok videos <laughs> every week. I Living was like, the dream, man. This is awesome, you know? <laughs> so I was like, at that point, that's when the switch came. I was like, I'm all in with this. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to do real estate agent work anymore. I still have my license and I still help clients. But it helps not a lot as, though, right? Yeah, not as in, intense as I was before. Okay. Because 2019, I made like almost 120 in a whole year, constant mm-hmm. grinding, grinding. With this flip, I made it in 56 days. I was like, it's a no brain. It's crazy, you know? right? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. So that was the big differences. And you learned everything on YouTube too with, the, with flipping or did you have a mentor that you know guided you and showed you the how to flip? Yeah, that was a good question. So like we were saying, YouTube University, you know, like I feel like the normal person can't use YouTube. I mean, they could, but there's a lot of things that they don't know that's specific to their market. Okay. And I think I was saying off camera to you, I think my... A lot of the reasons why I had great success in my first year flipping was mostly because I was an agent. I had all the experiences as an agent, so I knew my market. I understood my market. Uh, I knew what a good deal was right away. You know, maybe if you were in the shoes of a new flipper that wasn't an agent, maybe they don't know what a good deal is, you know. But because I had the experience, I was like, once I saw that first deal and the second deal and I saw the price of how much I could buy it for, I was like, yep, that's a good deal. Okay. Just buy it ASAP. You know? Got it. So what is a good deal for the people watching that are brand Ooh. new that want to be an investor? <laughs> you know, what's a good deal yeah. to you? What would be something you see? I'm like, I got to hop on that. So it just depends on your market. It could be way different if you're in Hawaii versus like Texas, you know? Got it. Okay. So in Hawaii right now, the median price of a single family home 
is one million dollars. Wow, it's like California then. Exactly. <laughs> one bedroom, one bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like it depends on your market, but also in Oahu, it depends on the neighborhood too. Okay. Uh, but we'll just talk about my first flip, for instance. Single family homes in that area were selling around like seven fifty or so, um, and I got it for five forty. Okay. So I was like, all right, good deal. I I don't even know need to know how much. I would need to renovate it. I just know that was a good deal. Bought it. We did eighty thousand dollars of rehab, which wasn't that bad. Okay. Listed it for seven sixty five. We sold for seven ninety five. Wow. And that was in um, August okay. of twenty twenty one. Now it's January twenty twenty two. Uh, the median price of homes in that area are now like eight fifty. Wow. Yeah. Crazy, that's a big, right? Yeah. That's so a big it's just spread. like, and I think it has a lot to do with the uh, state of our market that we're in right now. Okay. I think it's just like a really good time as a seller, you know. So I think that's why we're seeing that huge increase so fast. Got it. Okay. And so when you're acquiring these properties, like yeah. when you find it's a good deal, right? And you hop on and you want to take that deal. Yeah. What is your, your mindset going into this? Like, okay, I got to do this mm. first. Well, I got to oh, yeah. second this and then this. Like what's your workflow? That's a good question. So when I'm writing these offers, believe it or not, I don't know how I'm getting the money. Okay. I write the offer like 540 cash, 810 cash. I have an idea of what I can do, but I have my hard money lenders. I have my private money lenders. But Should have wore your hoodie too. Exactly. <laughs> like we're hard money lenders, you I'll, guys. I'll grab it in okay. a second. But um, yeah, like I'm writing it. I don't know if they're going to approve the deal. I don't know if my private money lender has enough money, mm. but I'm just confident like I'm going to do this and I'm going to find a way to do this, you know? Like it's such a good deal. I don't want to let it go. Yeah. So submit that offer. First thing I think of, okay, find the money. After that, find a contractor to you know um, fix it, and how much can they fix it? Okay. If I'm buying it at this, and this contractor says I can, they can fix it for this, and then I can sell it for this, mm -hmm. then it's a done deal, you know. Okay. You yeah. really got to know your numbers ahead of Pretty time. Pretty much, okay. yeah, yeah. And I have that mindset like, okay, if it's a done deal and, and I know I'm gonna take it, then I, I already assume like I'm gonna find a way how to do it. I just need to like find a way, basically, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So I hear that a lot, even like one of my mentors, JT, uh, he tells me when you find the deal, the money will follow. Yeah. Money going into being an investor, you know, did you have money becoming an investor, coming from an agent side, mm -hmm. or were you one of the few, like I've heard a lot of stories where people become investors with no money, yeah. and they had to find investors that would fund the deal. Oh yeah, so I started, you know, at first, like every noob investor mm -hmm. was had the mindset, okay, I do need money. And that's how I approached my first deal. Um, my hard money lenders said they needed 25%, but I didn't have that. So I teamed up with two buddies. Okay. We all pitched in $57,000 each, and then we did that. So $57,000 at that time was like almost all of my money. Okay. And the crazy thing is finding my second deal, I found it in the middle of my first deal. Oh, really? So okay. that's so you're still actively like, looking yeah. when you're already in a deal. Okay. So I was like, this is such a good deal, the second one. I, I just can't let it go. Yeah. And the uh, crazy thing was I... I was like, this is such a good deal, I need to take it. So I wrote my EMD. For those watching, that's your deposit. It was $5,000. The thing was, those were my last $5,000 in my bank account. So these are from your savings, your yeah. own pocket? Your because own pocket. Um, everything was tied up in the first deal. Okay. But I was like, you know what? Like, This is a good deal. It's going to pay off. Mm -hmm. Wrote $5,000. And like, I have a mortgage in this condo. And you're, this is while you're still paying for this yeah. condo? Oh, so wow. I was like, okay. okay, I think if I can use my credit cards for this, do that, sell this amount of stocks, I'll have enough to get me by. Okay. And luckily I did. Um, so it was really risky and I was scared. Oh, yeah. But that second one, I found out what private money lending was. And what and is that? Basically, it's like hard money lenders, but instead of an institution lending, it's a, an individual. So an okay. individual, he had connections to people with money. Mm -hmm. They lended to me. And I was like, all right. And that was a deal where I did um, I did the deal with none of my own money. Oh, okay. So you've used other people's money yeah. to fund the, the deal. Yeah. So first deal, I used okay. my own money. Then I got smarter. I started networking. Second deal, I just did it with 5000 okay. of my own money. And then I turned that 5000 into 120000 Wow. Crazy, right? So it's like a domino effect exactly. going forward. Okay. And wow. then speaking of a domino effect, now we're on to my third deal. And this is the crazy deal where... I bought it for 1.3 million. Okay. My only deposits were 2,000, but because I'm an agent, I negotiated for a commission. Okay. So I got $30,000 in commissions when I bought it. So what so, does that mean for people watching you as an agent? You negotiate for commission yeah. for the deal. What does that mean? So when, when you're a uh, an, um, a real estate agent, you are you could negotiate to get a commission, and in this case, uh, the seller was okay with paying a commission. 
uh, they just wanted 1.3 million. So I was like, all right, I'll give you your 1.3 million, but you have to pay me a commission. And they were like, deal. In my mind, I was like, I knew this is a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> so it was cool the fact that I could ha use that ability as an agent. Uh -huh. So basically, I made $28,000 buying this property. Wow. Crazy. That right? is amazing. So I have no money in the deal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That is so cool that you were able to fund that without you know putting a lot of your own yes. skin in the game, your own exactly. money. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Because when you're putting too much of your own money into the deal and your money's held up there, mm -hmm. now you're kind of stuck and hoping that, okay, things oh, have to work yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. It's a bigger risk. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Cool. So moving forward with this year, what are some, what are two big goals that you're really working mm -hmm. on to really project you forward, to move that needle forward, to oh, yeah. maybe grow your team if you have a team right now? Yeah, so last year, you know, I was just kind of winging it, you know, like I had no mentorship. I made 150,000, I was like, wow, this is super cool. And then uh, we went, I went to the Ryan Pineda Mastermind where we yeah, met. That's where we met you guys. And I was, it was super, super dope. Yeah. And I was like, wow, like this changed my mind. Because before, I was kind of like against mentorship. I was like, I don't need that, you mm -hmm. know? Like, look at me, I made 150 without mentorship. But then after that ma mastermind, I networked with so many people who are hungry, who are like, you know, hustlers like you, yeah. like JT, and Thanks, I was man. like, these people are dope. I can learn a lot from them. So then my mind changed. I was like, okay, this is what I accomplished without, or without coaching. Mm -hmm. Let's see what I could accomplish with, with coaching. Yeah. So now I do that, and now all my efforts are focused into just investing. Oh. I do have a real estate team because I felt like I built a large clientele and like client, you know, influx mm. that it's not going to stop. And I feel like I would be wasting, you know, I'd be leaving money on the table if yeah. I didn't help them out. So now I have two agents under me. So now whenever I get clients, I pass them off to them and Got they're it, my like yeah. best friends. So okay. I think it's a win-win. Like I train them, I teach them how to be an agent, how to make money and they help me because they take off the agent work off yeah. the table okay. while I can you know, focus on the investing. Side. investing. So now because of that, and I have like my systems in place, this year I have a goal, originally was to make 1 million in profits, mm. but I, you know Grant Cardone, he's all about 10X. So yeah. I was like, you know what, let's aim for the moon, aim high, and then, you know, we'll see where we land. Yeah. So now my goal is 1.5 million. There you go. And then I, I do wanna uh, focus on my, um, rental portfolio mm. because you know just like being an agent when you sell houses that's not ongoing income it's not Same, cash flow exactly just time. like with flipping yeah I'm making these big amounts of monies but if I stop working like that's just a one-time payment yep. so now like with the profits I make I want to buy at least four Airbnbs out here in Hawaii um, no 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 out okay. in the mainland um, okay between you and I and like the people watching like um, Airbnbs in Hawaii aren't that great. I've been hearing that a lot. Like, the regulations like behind me, all of Waikiki, that's the only places you can do okay. Airbnb. You can't do it in single family homes, all that. So it's like, you know what, like, let's go to the mainland where regulations aren't as bad. Okay. Um, so that's like kind of like where my sights are is my main two goals, 1.5 million in income, buy four rental properties. Okay. Are you yeah. currently building a team right now? You did mention you have two agents that yeah. you're passing the referrals to, but as far as an investment team, mm -hmm. are you trying to build something up with that too? I've actually thought of that. Um, I don't really think I need a team right now, but okay. we'll see as I scale because as you know, Hawaii and like in California, homes are expensive. Yeah. So if you can flip them, you can get a good margin. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I don't really need a team. What I do, what I am doing is uh, partnerships. Is I, I know a lot of people that want to learn how to flip. Uh -huh. So what I'm doing is instead of use, using my time, you know, like you hear, you know, other people's money, OPM, there's OPT, other Use people's time. time. Yeah. So my incentive is like, hey, you go out, you spend the time looking for deals, bring it to me. If it's a good deal, we'll, we'll, we'll JV, mm -hmm. you get a piece of the cake and I'll teach you how to do it. Okay. So it's like a win-win for both of us. Got know? it. And that's all about it, win-win. And you guys all heard that too, if you guys want to partner with yeah. Jeremy, you know, Get find out. a deal on Oahu, hit me up. And you're looking for hard money lenders, too, right? And I'm always looking for hard money lenders. You know? We gotta get the hoodie in the video soon, too, man. Wait, is it cool if we, like, cut pauses and I'll grab my hoodie? We can grab it. Okay, yeah, I'll, if grab you it, want. I'll grab it. He's gonna go grab it. So grab while he's grabbing his hoodie, you guys, so Jeremy and I met in Vegas. We met in Vegas, what was it, bro? Like, four days ago? Four days ago. Four days ago, we were in Vegas four days ago at Ryan Panetta's Future Flipper event, and there was a huge Hawaiian group out there, you know, when we were at the club. Oh, yeah. We all the guys going, Chew! And I was like, oh, that's how you know all the Hawaiians are in here. Ugh. And then you know, I came across him with his hoodie, and yeah, I saw, I was like, bro, this is too funny. So this is my hoodie, camera. this is just like my name, my logo. And then on the back, like I knew I'm going to be in a, like a bunch of real estate investors, so I said, I'm looking for private money lenders. <laughs> oh. And like, you know, like I probably raised... 
not that much, like probably like fifty five thousand dollars. Just people say, hey, I'm committed. Let me know your next flip, which was cool. But I thought it was really funny because it was such a hit in terms of social media. Okay. And like people like thought it was cool. It was funny. They took a picture with me, you know, tagged me, post on the story, and I think that right there. That like provided value on its own、mm. because it led people to my social media. And believe it or not, you know when you talk about currency, money, I do believe there's a thing called social currency,、yeah. where if you have you know a big enough social media presence, you have some influence. And on top of influence, you could create a network, or you just never know community who you're gonna meet、yeah. through social media. Exactly. So like, what if someone who posted that who was really rich, they saw and they're like, wow, this guy's funny, like he's cool. Let me find him and then reaches out to him.、Yeah. You know, so. I just thought it would be funny, so no, I like it, man. And it'll work. You guys, follow, give him a follow, Jeremy Mateo, the Je- the Jeremy Mateo,、yeah. <laughs> and he is looking for private money lenders. If you guys are private money lender, DM. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That is awesome,、Put、man. Talking about social media, so you know, I do a lot of video content. I'm learning the investing side of the house. What is something that has really helped you catapult your social media influence、oh, to help、yeah. you get deals? Have you gotten deals from social、oh, yeah. media? All my deals come from social media. One hundred percent, right now. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So the thing is,、um, when I first started in January twenty twenty one, I got that great advice from our buddy Alex Camacho,、mm. and like he said, he said, "Don't worry about finding the money. Worry about finding the deal." Okay.、So、I was like, "All right, how do I find a deal?" And I knew that I was really good at one thing, and that was social media. So when I started as an agent, I sucked at cold calling, I sucked at door knocking, all of that. Me too. Right? And I was like, I knew I'm good at social media, so I'm gonna do that. So I took what I was good at as an agent, and I took those strategies and I applied it to being an investor. Okay. So literally on my Instagram story, I just post in words. Like, hey, I'm looking to flip a house. I'm looking to buy a house, all cash.、Mm. Let me know if it's run down or unwanted. Let me know, and I'll even pay you a finder's fee、okay. if you find me something. And I kept posting that on my story every single day. And like a month later, some random person who wasn't even following me, by the way, wow,、um, messaged me saying, "Hey, my friend told me about your post and、uh, told me to hit you up. My aunt is trying to sell her house,、okay. and、um, she told me about it. I checked it out." And that ended up being my first deal. Wow, crazy, right? First deal ever. First deal in flipping social media. Holy cow! I、yeah. I thought you were using the off market method or、oh. MLS method, having the、yeah. MLS. Off、That's... market, but social media. Yeah, with social media though, that is so <coughs> crazy, man. Wow. Yeah. Then、crazy. that really shows you guys the power of social media. Like, yeah, yeah. So I met JT. He's one of my mentors through social media from one of my my friends that Remax, where I'm still a part time agent that I hang my license with. And you know how how I actually met JT. So I make a lot of content and stuff,、yes. and my friend she had said, "Hey, you know, you look like this guy who makes a lot of content <laughs> in California." She's like, "What are you talking about? Show me his videos." She shows me his videos, and the video she showed me was when he was out in Hawaii. Oh no way! It was his his reel. It was a hilarious reel. It was like girls screaming in the background. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those audio things, and I think it said. When your your offer gets accepted or whatever by an agent, I was I was laughing, man. I was like, I gotta reach out to this guy, you know, you know,、nice. see what value I can provide to him and、yeah. how we can collaborate and you know how I can learn real estate investing, how I can help him grow his social、yeah. media presence. And I reached out to him, and dude, I've only known him like two weeks, but he's an awesome guy.、Oh, yeah. Like JT, if you're watching this, bro, appreciate、so、you linking us all up. Like if I didn't meet JT, I would not have been at the. Future Flipper event, I would、yeah. not have met you, and Crazy, we would、right? not be here making a podcast together. This is all within three weeks time span, you guys. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> really, utilize social media. The power of social media is amazing. What you can、exactly. do with it, dude. So that I think that's really cool that your first deal came from Crazy, social media. Crazy, right? That's so cool.、Um, as far as content wise, yeah. What is your planning behind posting content? Because I see you're very、mm-hmm. active on posting content.、Out. Yeah, yeah. What is something you're really focusing on this year with social media? Oh yeah, get content. Great question.、Um, it kind of goes back like. I like what you said. Is when you first saw JT on social media, the first thing you thought was like, "I gotta meet this guy," and then the next thing was, "How can I provide value?"、Mm. So that's the number one thing with content is like, content. Most people think of as, "Oh, influencers. They're so self-absorbed, conceited," and it is true for the most part. But that's why I feel like with real estate investors or people who are in sales,、mm-hmm. if you can provide value, you'll get a following. You know, because、yep. you're helping people, you're teaching them how. So that's kind of anything in return. Exactly,、yeah. you know, and I think that's my approach is like, how can I provide value to the masses? You know,、okay. like I'm still new, but I feel like I know more than、um, someone just starting, and that's how I learned was、yeah. YouTube, social media. So I was like, you know what? Let me take the things that I've learned and put on social media, and maybe someone sees it, they get inspired, they'll be like, you know what? This guy's dope. 
I'm going to quit my job and do real estate investing. You yeah. Know? All I want to do is provide value, teach people, tell them my story, and then oh. hopefully it inspires them to do the same. Okay. Do you try to post like three reels a day or um, is it more so like – Now my team – so we have like this accountability thing. We always talk to each other okay. in the morning. Uh, right now it's like at least – one YouTube a week. Okay. Um, then I take that, turn it into long reels. Long form content? Like exactly. the, oh, okay. Long, long form and then turn it into short form. So at least reels, you know, TikTok, but try to do at least, you know, if it if it's short form, like at least five a week, you know? Five a week, okay. Yeah. And it's just like, it's nothing planned. It's just like, I know my quota, but like, I'm always constantly thinking like, what can I do? What's a good idea? Okay. Um, but like, I don't like to force content and um, it's just, if I get inspiration, then I'll do it right there. Got it. Okay, that is awesome. And speaking of content, I want to give a shout out to Justin Yurong. We met him at Future Flippers, brother. Like, I saw that guy. We were we were doing uh we were doing JT's notary in yeah, the yeah. coffee spot. And I saw that. Justin comes up with his camera. He starts filming. I'm like, dude, yep. I love you, man. You got your camera. We were drinking at the bar and got his camera. Right. Yeah. Always posting social media content and Always. planning content out. Always, yeah. But he shared a very valuable golden nugget with me with his his strategy that he uses to post. 120 times per week and that number has gone even higher than that man yeah so how he does it is and that's kind of how we strategize and use our system too so he'll film the content and then he'll push it out to a third party that'll edit the content video husky video husky is one of them yeah that's what he uses it's a great service too yeah and he'll push it out and they'll do the editing while Mm -hmm. you know he's still out you know making connections yeah and then we'll have another guy a third party that is Posting the content for nice. him, wow. because I, if you guys you know post a lot of content, as you know yourself too, writing those descriptions out, thinking of oh, hashtags, yeah. Yeah. You know, time consuming. It is. Just, man. <laughs> you gotta automate or delegate, you yeah. know, or, or delegate and elevate, like what Ryan exactly. says. And I'm really trying to utilize that in my business. If that's one like value that I can you know share with you that I learned is having those systems in place, like putting the content out there, but planning content out, like intentional content to yeah. teach people, yeah. and having a calendar to stay accountable. With exactly. It. Yeah. But yeah, dude, like creating content. What Gary Vee says too, content is king, yes. but distribution is queen. Oh, yeah. So you guys got to know where you're going to put your content out, you know? If you're just going to make content, where are you going to put it at, you exactly, know? Exactly, yeah. So we're trying to IG, YouTube, TikTok, yes. all, all those big channels right exactly. now. Yeah, yeah. And Twitter too. Like, link, I even post LinkedIn now. Like I post Reels. I post my YouTube videos because I feel like there's there's this um term. It's called being omnipresent. And I always yeah. tell my agents, my team – like whenever you post, post on all platforms because like your job as an agent is to be in front of their face. Us, us as investor, like same thing. You never know who's watching our videos. Mm-hmm. So if you post on Facebook, you know, I go on Facebook. Oh, I see John's face. Okay, log off. Go on Twitter. Oh, I see John's face again. Everywhere, yeah. You know, like so every time they see you, they associate your name and your face mm-hmm. with real estate. So whenever like someone wants to buy or sell a house or maybe they want to sell their house to you, first person they're going to think of is a person that, that they see all okay. the time which is you because it's like you're training them subconsciously exactly okay. it's kind of like when you're like you know on the mainland you're driving down you see the billboards yeah inside if you see the same billboard all, all the time over and over and over always going to remember it you know? yeah so that's kind of like my approach with posting everywhere you know? okay yeah. that is so cool man thank you <laughs> yeah answer, no man. Worries, that's bro. awesome man. <laughs> yeah so i i think you know a lot of the things from the conversation is just staying consistent. Yes. Staying top of mind, yes. utilizing social media to Absolutely. your advantage. Yeah. Right now we're in such an era where social media is, you know, so crazy what you yeah. can do with it. And we're about to go into the metaverse too. Like yeah. you know, some of the things we were learning from Ryan's conference too is like you can buy real estate in the metaverse, bro. Yeah. It's like it's crazy. That? It's like mind blowing. Yeah. Like metaverse is a virtual world and you can buy real estate. That crazy, is crazy, right? So crazy. Yeah. I don't want to get too far off topic, but are you already getting into the metaverse? Or do you have other investment, you know, portfolios that you're getting to? Like stock, you mentioned stocks a little yeah, bit. Yeah. You know, I know there's NF- NFTs, NFTs and then yeah. the metaverse. Yeah. Is that something you're getting so into? So I'm like, I dabble like very, very minimal, like less than 1% in stocks. Like I'm all real estate. Okay. Uh, I recently got into crypto. I probably put, invested like, I think 50,000 into it. Mm-hmm. And that in- includes coins and NFTs. Okay. Awesome uh, small NFTs in terms of metaverse. I bought some, uh, I guess, NFTs within this um, crypto gaming, this crypto game called Big Time. Okay. But that's about it. But I do plan on getting into the metaverse. Mm-hmm. It's just like I don't know which one to do. Yeah. But I'm sure, like, eventually they'll all be connected. Mm-hmm. But for 2022, I do want to plan. I, I do plan on investing a lot of money in crypto NFTs, specifically in crypto gaming and the metaverse, because I feel like it's gonna blow up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, people are already attached to their, their phones, you know, yeah. on social media. <laughs> Imagine, you know, putting on goggles and 
you can enter a different world yeah. where you know you work through that world and you don't have to leave your home. Yeah, we're kind of already living in that era with COVID. It's like they were everyone's working virtually. Yeah, and I think that's where the space has opened up to the metaverse and yes. the NFTs yes. and crypto. It's, it's such a crazy, crazy <laughs> world we're living in right now. Yeah. But to close things out, um, what is one thing that you have learned mm-hmm. that you could pass on to? Your previous self that you wish you knew before that maybe someone watching could be like hey i wish you know i'm glad i learned that from yeah. this video i'm gonna apply that right now what's one thing in investing that you learned yeah. that's such been immense value to you good question uh, i think it would be like we mentioned it earlier but i'll echo it again with kind of like a little more after but don't worry about finding the money i know a lot of new people you know new investors they don't want to jump into something because they don't have the money you don't you really don't need money you know so don't worry about finding the money just worry about finding a really, really good deal. If you can do that, the money will come. Mm-hmm. And so people are like, all right, so like, is money gonna like appear out of nowhere? No, you, know, you have stuff. to network. You have to go out there and look for people who do have money. Mm-hmm. So if I could start over again, I would do what exactly what I did. I would network, and by network I mean go to meetups, local meetups, meet people who are doing what you want to do mm. and surround yourself with them. You don't need to follow them. You don't need to work with them, but go to the places where they are, which is the meetups and then use social media because chances are if they're a real estate investor in today's age, they have social media. Yep. So find them on social media. Chances are that they're posting a lot of valuable content, teaching people. Okay. I do this. A lot of investors I know here everywhere do this. So surround yourself in terms of following them, going to meetups. Once you know who the who's who, then you're like, all right, cool. They could probably teach me. But if you ask them, they probably will say, sorry, I, I don't have time to mentor someone, all of that. But if you find a really, really good deal mm-hmm. and you give it to them, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to take you on board, you know, partner with you, show, show you how to do it. And, you know, maybe they'll give you a little profit if you're lucky. Yeah. But even if they don't, you know, like the... Value is in the education Mm. because let's say they give you nothing, but they bring you on they teach you how to do everything step by step That right there is so much value and once you know how to do it um, Guess what you already know how to find a good deal just replicate that so when you find the next deal You'll be able to do it. Don't worry about the money worry about finding a good deal Network and use social media announce to the world. Hey, I'm a new real estate investor I'm looking to learn how to flip or looking how to learn how to invest. I'm looking for deals to buy and I'm looking for private, private money, money lenders. Let's go, baby. Oh, that was dope. <laughs> Came straight from my head. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so if, any, if you're new, take my advice. I promise you in like six months, you already have your first flip done. So yeah. There you go, guys. Cool, you guys man. heard it from Jeremy. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like as... To piggyback off what he said, when you find that mentor to provide value, Boom. don't hit them up and be like, "Hey, can I pick your brain?" I, that's oh, one I thing that I that, hate. Dude. Oh, like, no, I don't want you to pick my brain. Yeah, you're a like, brain surgeon, bro. Yeah. You want me to use my time, mm-hmm. which time is money. You know, you want me to use my time to teach you how to make money. You know, so like, never ask someone to pick their brain. Yeah. Like, I get that a ton. Like, this is my first time ever seeing it recorded, but. I hate hearing that, yeah. you know, if someone, if you ask someone like a higher, you know, status than you, they're, they're not going to like you, no. you'll, you'll get on their shit list. So provide value. value and the way you provide value to flippers is you find them an amazing deal. Yep. Boom. Exactly. You yeah. guys, so you heard it. <laughs> and if you guys are trying to learn how to invest, you know, DM or comment below invest and, you know, reach out to one of us, yeah. we'll reach out to our mentors and we'll definitely provide that value to you. Boom. But I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast session. We're closing it out right now. Yeah. Jeremy, thank you so much for having us, brother. Sure, we'll definitely have to come out again to Hawaii and do oh, some yeah. more features out here. Bring JT out next time. JT, come on, man. <laughs> but, you know, to end things out, I, real quick question. So when we're at the bar, right? Yeah. And I heard that, chew, yeah. you know, <laughs> real quick, what, what does that mean? Like, what is the story <laughs> behind that? Like, so what, what is that? It's really just Hawaii's like, you know, like, let's go. Like, it's kind of like, it's not really a chant like, right? like, 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 you know, like okay. that. It's just, it's a Hawaii thing. That's kind of like how I explain it. Basically. So one person does it and everyone else echoes it if they're from Oh, Hawaii. yeah. Like, you know, when I'm at a, like a festival like Coachella or Vegas or like at a bar, you know, like, okay. I knew there was a lot of Hawaii people there, but I didn't know exactly how many. So okay. like, when a Hawaii person hears that, especially if you're on the mainland, they're uh-huh. like, whoa, there's my people here, you okay. know? So <laughs> if you notice when we were at the bar, it was a huge bar. It was everywhere. It's like, like, oh, what is we, that? We yelled at one part. And then everyone, some other people yelled at the other part. And I'm like, yo, 
That's our call. That's our call. That's our call. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> so it's okay if I do it with you? Yeah, you, let's you do, do it. it. All right, let's do so it. I'll, go, I'll do it first, and then you can do it. Okay. Right. Hey, hey, there you go, bro. <laughs> All right, guys. GM invest. Let's go. Let's go. Peace. <laughs>